What's up, dipshit? What's up, dumpster fire? Ooh, good one. Good one. I'm like really sniffly today and like sneezy. So if I. Great. Sniffle. Great. Last it's time you got. Crazy. Last time you got popped in the nose by your dog and sniffed and sniffled through the entire thing. Now you start this one off by saying that you're sniffly. I know. He hasn't punched me again. Um, he just drags whole tree branches in the house. And uh, what else did he do? He wants the outside to be in. It's a lot. He's a lot. It's cold, so he wants the trees inside. <laughs> what that was, was a squeaky. That was a squeaky squeaky basketball. (laughs) I thought he was going to take a nap, but but you have to see this toy. Somebody, I stopped by our PO box today and somebody sent him toys. And one of them is like a bloody butcher knife. And it's the funniest thing ever. So now he's just running around here with a knife. (laughs) He's living his true life. I was eating Taco Bell and I'm like, you look like a murderer. You look like a murderer. Yeah. When did we stop being okay. friends? When did we stop being friends? Okay, I'm not gonna go to work, get myself food, go to your house, and then come back. I have to I have to eat. There used to be a time in our lives when you would go to work and get Taco Bell, then you'd come over to my house, we'd eat Taco Bell, we'd have fun stories. We can't talk that much in person or we'll ruin everything for the pod. Whatever. So yeah, so I went to the P.O. Box. We, I got that. We got some other letters. We got more coffee from Old Town Roasting. Old Town Roasting. Bing, da, ding, ding, dong. We got Old Town Roasting. We got more of our signature coffee. So now we have like a spare bag. Um, And they have to put it up on the website so people can buy it. It's not up there yet. What is going Is that dog th- literally throwing things around your house? See, one of the things he got in the P.O. Box today was these um, foil bat, the, these bats that have foil wings, and he's playing with one of the bats right now. He's a good kid. Is he happy how that Halloween is over? Mm, I don't know. I think I don't know if he knew. That was our first holiday together, though. That's fitting, though. That's pretty fitting. Did you get any kids come to your house? No. I don't know. I didn't put the light on. I didn't buy any candy. Jeez, what a grumpy old witch lady. I don't get, I live on a main road. We don't don't, get kids. I don't get kids either usually, but I put my light on and then I got, you know, half a dozen and I got yelled at by three parents, but whatever. Yeah, that's not, why would I want to sign up for that? For the kids. No. The two best things that happened, the three parents who told me my house was too, too, this is too scary for kids or something along those lines, which absolutely ridiculous because it's fucking Halloween and it's supposed to be scary. And they don't have a problem with people who have bloody body parts all over their front lawn and giant dinosaurs and skeletons hanging off the roof. They got a problem with my creepy ass house, which is fine. It's supposed to be scary, but the best two best things that happened. One, this kid walked up all by himself. He was maybe like 12 or 13. And he comes up on my porch and he knocked on the door and went trick or treat. And I opened up the door really fast and was standing... I'm sorry. Jeez. What do you have? What is going on with this podcast these days? I don't know. I pull open the door so awesome. fast, and the kid literally went, Bleh! when I did that. And then I said, I was like, did I scare you? And he re- I had scared him, but he didn't want to admit it because he was like 12 or 13. And he was like, oh, there was just a weird re- a reflection of some light somewhere, and it kind of startled me. Trick or treat, and then I put candy in his bang, and then he kind of like walked off my porch. But I could tell I had scared him, which was awesome. Then the second mm-hmm. one was three girls, probably between 10 and 12, were walking up to my front porch, and w- the two girls came up, and one girl was like, I'm not going, I'm not going. It looks too scary, it looks too scary. And then the two girls came up and got their candy and were like terrified of me. And then they went back and they literally like dragged the girl back onto my porch. They were like, you got to get kids so scary. He's so scary looking. So Didn't you awesome. say you just like had a suit on? I had a suit on. I had black makeup under my eyes and around my eyes. Mm-hmm. My whole inside of my house was dark except for 10 candles. I had a fog machine going inside my house. So smoke was billowing out the door when I would open the door. And then I was playing classical music at a really slow at a really slow speed 
So it was just like, gong, 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 like super weird noise coming out of my house. Way scarier than plastic skeletons. I mean, that sounds pretty scary, but like, I feel like I walked up to worse than that when I was a kid. That's like fine. I feel like houses that decorate in a Halloween manner are what people expect. But then a house with just a fucking creepy guy inside of it freaks people out. Well, then they should be scared of you all the time. Yes, exactly. Yes. Always a creepy guy in there. You don't even have that much weird shit outside. You have like a bird feeder and fucking not whatever. There's no decorations in my house. Nothing. Except my lawn hasn't been mowed in a month and a half. I wonder why that is. How's that lawnmower going sitting in your garage doing nothing, not even mowing your lawn? It's still there. Or my backyard needs mowed. Oh, well, there's a lawnmower in your garage. Why don't you do it? I don't know how. Jeez. <sighs> I can't do it. So we had our Halloween event at Stash on Friday. And yeah. Cool and everybody we had a lot of fun. And... And I shocked yeah. the shit out of people. I brought my turn of the century Violet Ray machine and I healed everybody by giving them all electric shocks. Yeah, I have a bruise on my left knee, like a little baby one. And I was like, why the fuck did I get that? And then I, I posted the video and I'm like, oh, yeah. People got healed. They did. We well, brought the machine out and you were on the microphone and you were like, yeah, people used to, you know, like quackery, like people used to say that this healed stuff. And then you said that there was an attachment to put it up people's butts and the JJ's. And I was like, Tenny, why are you doing that? Can you imagine taking just an electronic? That machine is just direct current. It just bl- blows electricity into you and then putting a big glass tube in one of your holes and firing it up. Nope. I'm sure that someone's doing it right now as, like, we record this podcast. Probably. No judgment. No judgment. Everyone had fun. People got drunk. A bunch of us went to Gasoline Alley, the bar, later afterward and got more drunk. It was very fun. I came home and took care of the baby. What else? Pass out. Pass out. I watched the fights all day yesterday. Wait, what day is it? The day before yesterday, I watched the fights. What did I do yesterday? I don't remember. Mind wipe. Well, I put up, I put up the fence. Okay. I have like a front porch so i i put like a baby gate across the porch so the dog doesn't run away because he's like a flight risk so i did that i did all of my laundry this is really depressing slash embarrassing but i'm kind of proud of it so i'm just gonna throw it out there because everybody likes how honest we are so here we go i haven't even told you this i haven't told anybody this nobody not anybody on earth i since Bean passed away i i i didn't wash my bedding since like he passed away i couldn't do it i didn't want it to be not the bed that we always slept in and especially those last two weeks we just like snugged together because he was not doing great and i couldn't bring myself to wash it and i finally washed out my bedding last night and like i was like taking it off and just like sobbing and then the new doggo came in there and like sat next to me like he was really good about knowing that i was super upset but then it was like I don't know. It's such a weird feeling, like crying over one thing and then the new thing is here and they don't know. It's not his fault he's not being, you know what I mean? Right. So it's weird, but I was glad he was here. Every time that I've broken down about Bean since he's been here, I'm like glad he's here, but it's still like so weird. It'd be like if you were sitting there and crying about a girlfriend while your new girlfriend was there, they'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> no. <laughs> like it doesn't, it doesn't feel right at all, um, but I can't help it. But I'm glad I did it. It's just, that was basically the last thing that was my holdout that just, I don't know, I can't explain it. It was just like our safe space. And I'm like, I don't want it to be not what it was anymore. Right. Even though it's gross. I get that, but I couldn't do it. And a lot of people, and this too, like when I would watch old movies and TV shows, I would always think it was super weird when like, you know people would lose their kids to like a crime or just whatever natural whatever and they would leave like the room like a shrine and i like finally get it now because there's certain stuff you just don't want to move you don't want to touch and it's not like you think they're going to come back it's just like you don't want it to be different you know yeah at a certain time though i feel like that's slightly psychopathic i know it took me five months i mean i wouldn't leave it like that for fucking eight years this has been hard but i'm proud of myself that i did it so I washed all that. I washed all my clothes and all my towels. Good work. Yeah. I, so wash, my, I wash my curtains once a month. You would. 
I watched everything else. Like I'm not. That's not like me at all. I just like couldn't do when, it. I just. When was, like, my body is... a, when was the last time you took a shower? Dirt bed. <sighs> last night. I did. <laughs> I know. I know. It's fucked up. I can't believe I just said that on here, but whatever. It's like a lot of people manage grief different, and like I would just want people to feel normal if they've ever done some shit like that. Like first, first of all, I think you have to realize there's a lot of people who probably haven't washed their sheets in a year. I know, right? Um, people are like, "Why am I washing my sheets? It's just me getting in them over and over again." <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how it was, but and then, it, but it was honestly getting the new guy too, and I'm like, he doesn't need to be smelling an old dog. Like that's not fair slash that's gotta be weird so right it finally felt okay you know what and you told me that too like like you said well, even... like, well like you said like you're dating a new guy and he comes over and you're like before we leave i have to go and smell my ex-boyfriend's sweater <laughs> <laughs> i know i know like but you told me that too like right after he passed i like couldn't pick up his water bowls and like his bed was still out and stuff and like i'm pretty sure it was you where you were just like you'll just have a moment and you'll know it's time to do you'll just do it yeah so Everything's been taking kind of a minute, but yeah, yeah the little one's helping. He finally just fell asleep in the window, so hopefully no more squeakies this episode. But those, those, what you're talking about though, that's just the the process in and of itself working itself out. Like the entirety of grief, like will continue like the rest of your life. I know for sure. There are just portions of your life that are going to you're going to realize like, oh, this thing has to change, and you'll just slowly make changes. But the grief and the memory and the love and all that stuff, like I said, those are persistent things. They're non-tangible. They they always will go on. Yeah, there's like a, I don't know. And you know, I think too much. We both do. But there's a big part of me where it's like, when you have like a soul connection with an animal or a person like that, you don't think you're going to have another one. So like, I have this weird guilt now with a new dog where I'm like, am I ever going to like, like I'm putting pressure on him to be like the most perfect, but he's a different fucking dog. I can't like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's like any relationship, animal, human, friend, lover, whatever it is. There's always this initial burst of like, is this, is this worth this? Is it going to be as good as this last thing or this other thing in my mind? And you don't realize that like whatever relationship that you're in like I said, animal person or otherwise, like it just becomes its own thing without you even thinking about that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I figured too. It's like, we just, I've only had it for two weeks. Like I don't even, we don't even know each other yet. You know? Right. Yeah. So it's just weird. Glad he's here. I'm glad it's not quiet. It's um, weird though. It's weird though. The psychology of stuff like that, because you say like, Am I ever going to feel super bonded to this dog? Like, whatever. Like, am I going to have that same relationship to him? What you don't say in your head is, am I going to be sad when this dog dies? Yeah. And yes, yeah. you are. Yeah, for sure. Which means you're going to bond with that dog. I know. We're already, I know. We're already bonded. It's just like that level. I don't even, and I've watched, you know, like, for example, like my dad's had, a lot of dogs since I've been a kid and and I'm sure he has like favorites but they're all you know they're all special but it's like yeah you, you just have those ones and I've only had like one so obviously he's like the guy right <laughs> <laughs> but people get that way I find this fascinating too I I have emotional attachments to like former emotional attachments when I think back now that they're not actually emotional they are to a certain degree to like cars that I've had in my life yeah where I'm like yeah. oh that first Dodge Dart Swinger I had man I had fun in that car like all of a sudden this flood of memories will come back or yeah. like the minivan I had that I travel all over the United States in, like that was a good I slept in it all those adventures and that's just fucking metal yeah I know I've had a couple of favorites too but you can't keep them forever, especially not in Michigan. No. Nope. Land of the salt and snow. Land of the salt and endless fucking rain. My sump pump's been running for four days. I know. Everything, I just feel like everything outside is just like mush. It is just mush. I had to take down the giant pumpkin plant in my backyard. Why? It was dying. It had the frost and the cold had kind of killed it. It was turning brown and it, it had three tiny little tiny tiny baby pumpkins on it. But, but they weren't. Them? I did pluck them there in the garage. 
Oh my god, I gotta look at one. I'm gonna try and see if I can get seeds out of any of them. I think I still think they're too young to have seeds in them, but maybe I can have seeds for next year. Well, I already brought bought us packs. I know, but these are like natural, brought by the squirrel pumpkin, mystery pumpkin seeds. I meant to show you, I took a picture in the backyard. There's something growing under my bird feeder, like my porch bird feeder. I feel like the birds planted corn under my porch somehow. Oh, for sure. The bird mix that you get has like corn and wheat millet in it. Like you probably have yeah. corn growing for sure. Maybe it's wheat. Something is growing. I took a picture of it and I'm like, this is not a weed. This is a thing. It's probably, well, it's either wheat or corn. Okay, I'll show it to you. It's, they look like corn leaves, but there's these little, like, I don't want to say flowers, but little, like, white little things coming out of the middle. It's probably corn. Yeah, it's all about to die anyway, but the, the, best, the, best, is when you, is the best is when you get random mystery squirrel bird corn that's planted via nature, and then you actually, like, gets to the point where you're getting little cobs. I know, I wish it would have happened earlier so I could save it, but... The problem is, is when it gets little cobs, that's when the birds and squirrels realize there's a little cob on there. They can have them. Then they eat it. They can have them. Um, this is really unrelated to anything, but this weird thing happened. Um, I don't know how I don't want to say this. Um, but I have a, I have like a couple different crushes. You know how I am. Um, but there's like one that I have who I interact with somewhat on Twitter, but not like anybody would know. Literally nobody would know. Right. And somebody who listens to our podcast like DM'd me on our podcast thing and we're like i don't know why but i got this feel they're like psychic i guess and they got this feeling the other day and they're like something went by and i was just like something whispered in their ear and it just went oh he likes her and like something told them that this person likes me which i think they do because we have talked before whatever but it was so weird because they don't follow they don't know anything about any of this and they picked out how many people do i fucking interact with on twitter every day a million like and they picked out the right, I, I go, no, first I go, okay, who was it? And they're like, oh, I don't remember. Like they, I don't know if they retweeted something of yours or blah, blah, blah. But just in that instant, I felt like something told me that they liked you, liked you. And I was like, okay. And then I would go, okay, try and remember who it was or send me a screenshot. And I'm like, they're gonna send me the wrong fucking person. And they sent me the fucking right person. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I guess so. But then you gotta remember too, people on Twitter are creepy and spend way too much time like looking at tweets and some people spend a lot of time cross referencing Instagram's tweets and posts and interactions and likes. And it's, it can get really weird and creepy. Well, that's not how I took it. I was impressed, but whatever. If the FBI, CIA and NSA could somehow like get people who are just normal creeps on social media to work for them, they yeah. have all the information they could ever possibly want. Dude, me and Angie have been trying to get that job for like 15 years. We've found the people. I found a guy's fucking social. This is really embarrassing. I don't know why I'm saying this out loud. I found a guy's socials from his fucking first name on Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> but I really did. I was That was one of my best ones. Oh, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I was traveling somewhere. This is a few years ago. I was traveling somewhere and I took a picture of myself waiting for my Uber outside of the airport. And I didn't want anybody to know where I was at because I was filming something. So I just picked a like blank stone wall at the outside of the airport. And I took a picture of myself and said like, you know, something to the effect of like adventures to come soon or something like that. And there was no location tag on it or anything like that. And like the third person to post on the comment was like, why are you in Pennsylvania? And I was like, I direct messaged them and I was like, what? And they were like, that bench in front of that, behind you at that stone wall, that's at the airport. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. How, how? Fuck, this nondescript wall. <laughs> with a metal bench that's probably sold all over the world. I don't know. Great have, you seen, have you seen that new thing that Google is trying out where like you upload, it does exactly what I kind of just said, where you upload a picture of someone somewhere and then it looks at the background, it applies it to Google Maps and it tells you where they're at. Why are they doing that? 
it's like some location tagging thing where like the there's so many pictures of the world and places now that it's like a ai looking at the background and saying like oh that bread company is in this next across the street from there up there in seattle like it just knows exactly where you're at it's really creepy i mean that does make sense but i don't like it at all do not like the reality is that most people already location tag their photos i do if i'm home Already. But some people do it accidentally too, like it's just turned on. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. Ah, uh, just because my house has been broken into before, I, I didn't do any of that shit after that happened, especially because I still had Bean and I didn't want anything to happen to him. And then when I didn't have him, like the last five months, I got a little lax about it because I'm like, whatever, break the fuck into my house. I don't care. Nobody's there. Like, my dog is not there. I'm not there. Like, go to, I have nothing of value. All my shit's from a fucking thrift store. Like, have fun. But now, obviously, that I have a doggo again, I got to be careful when I'm not home because I will hunt down and kill somebody if I take my dog. You got to get that machete and that baseball bat ready. I know. I used my machete today to cut the pumpkin plant down. Nice. I must have looked like a fucking psychopath standing behind my house chopping the ground with a machete. Wait, what machete do you have? I have a big, long, old machete. My dad gave me one, but it's not that dope. It's not? Why? I don't know. He said he. I don't know why he had it. He had it in his garage. And he's like, "Do you want this?" I'm like, "Yeah." But he's like, "I don't think you could actually hurt anybody with that. It's kind of dull. It looks cool though." No, oh, I'll give you a knife sharpener. Okay, I'll just bring it over. Oh, oh cool. I want it. I can do it. I can do it after I mow your lawn. Okay, I gotta ask you about something else that you can probably do, but it's boring, so I won't ask you on here. Well, just tell me what uh, it is. I have a. Uh, I think it's ceramic, or I don't know what it is, but I. No, you didn't go with me to pick it up, but I bought this like two foot panther statue off Facebook Marketplace a while back to put in my tattoo studio. And he has like his mouth open and he's missing one fucking tooth. Can you yes. like make a new tooth? Yes, I can make him a new tooth and put it in. I like, I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner, but I was staring at it in my studio today and I'm like, I, I bet Tenny can craft a little tooth and glue it in there. Yes, I can. I have all the yes. materials. I have all the materials to fix things like that. Yes, I know. I just pictured it because his teeth are like off white a little bit. And I'm like, I bet he could match that white and just like make it. And nobody would ever know. Yeah. Okay. I'll bring it home. Yay. Yeah. That's exciting. I should have, I've had it for so long too. I, I don't know why it took me so long to fucking think of that. And you always talk about how you build your little people. That just means in payment. That just means you have to take me to Oakland County clerk tomorrow. I know I was already gonna. That means you're going to have to wake up slightly early. I know, because I have to go to the chiropractor. What time is your chiropractor appointment? I don't know. I have to figure it out, because they could not be further apart. I might have to go there and come back and get you, and then we'll go. Your chiropractor is that early? It's just in a different direction, like way the fuck over. So why would I? I don't know. I don't know if it makes sense to bring you with me. Well, I want to sit around for four hours while somebody snaps your back. Well, you can come with me. There's a good thrift store in the parking lot. Maybe. That's where I always go after. Maybe. But I gotta figure out the timing. If we can get to there, to back, to because both are kind of far. So right. whatever. We'll just talk about this later. Um We can do that and do all that stuff, and then you can get me Taco Bell and drop me off. And you won't get Taco Bell. We have to go to the post office too. Okay, but I'll buy a, I'll buy me a vegan a uh, vegan Sammy, and then you won't get one. Sounds great. And that'll make up for today for you eating Taco Bell and not bringing me any. God, I just needed it because I worked and I was hungry. <laughs> Whatever you had for dinner today. You I don't something. care. I'm joking. I don't. I don't know if you saw this. This is random too, but I don't know if you saw this cute thing that was on Twitter the other day. Did you see that weird? I don't even know if they're like an art house or if they're like a, I don't know what they are, but it's this, um, a gallery maybe, but I don't know. I don't know if they're an official gallery. I don't know what the fuck it is. Anyway, they did this thing recently, and I guess they've done a few where they like they bought an original Warhol, and then they made a hundred prints of it, but they're all like you can't tell. And then everybody online bought one of the hundred prints for two hundred fifty dollars, and they're all undistinguishable. And then one of the persons, the people that bought it, has a real one, but they don't know, and there'll never be a way to know. Yeah, isn't that so cool? It's pretty cool. I love that. I would do that. If I would have known about it, I would have bought one. At the same time, there was this thing that happened with, uh, what was the name of the gallery? Park West Gallery, which is in Michigan. It was our rival gallery when I framed pictures. And mm -hmm. Park West 
Park West was really known because they had all of these limited edition Salvador Dali prints that they were selling. And then someone found out that, uh, I think his name's Albert, who ran Park West at the time, that Albert, back in the day, had paid Salvador Dali like $10,000 to just sign like 5,000 sheets of paper. And so they were just printing what they were calling limited edition Salvador Dali's, but they were, there were thousands of them. So they were mostly worthless, but it, I mean, they had Salvador Dali's pencil signature on them, but. Yeah. I kind of liked with this, like the, the name that this organization, whatever the fuck they are gallery, they go by, I think it's mischief, but it's like M I S or no M S C H F is their like Twitter handle. And I, but I kind of liked how A, it's like a lottery and then one person will have the real one. But B, I liked how it just completely fucks up the value of that piece. Yeah. Like, that's cool to me. Yes. I mean, if the artist is dead. Right. Um, if the artist was alive, like, alive, that's like not very, like, don't fuck up somebody's shit. But like all of this is, if you think about it, I don't know, value and money and all that shit's bullshit anyway. So it's funny where they're just like, well, here's this irreplaceable thing and we're going to fuck it all up. Yeah. There's a story somewhere about... Uh... I don't know if it's just local lore and legend, but I've seen it in a couple of different books. And I've, when it comes to like limited edition stuff and prints and autographs, you know, I love people's autographs and stuff. But there's a story about in France, like 50 years ago, there was this couple and they were staying at this little villa on the beach. And they kept seeing this old man walking up and down the beach and it was Picasso. And they eventually struck up a conversation with him, hoping that they could get like, if we're going to be friends with Pablo Picasso, maybe he'll give us something like a painting or he'll draw something, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And so I guess like a week before, no, it was like they'd been there a week and then they went out in front of their house and Pablo Picasso was on the beach in front of their house and he had a stick and he, I guess he had been out there all morning and he had used the stick to make this giant elaborate Pablo Picasso drawing in the sand and then he signed it and he told them, you can have this until the tide comes in. And then he turned around and walked away. Dang. That's pretty cool. Oh, that was pretty cool. So they just sat there and looked at it all day and then waited for the tide to come in and wash it away. I like that. It's pretty cool. You would, you would do some shit like that. Probably. Maybe. Start yeah. burning all of the drawings in my upstairs. The thousands of monster drawings that are in my upstairs. Start burning them. That's an episode of the Creep Show that I watched recently. I haven't seen any ones. Watch the new Creep Show. It's about a guy who burns a painting, and there's a monster inside the painting, and it's pretty good. Sweet. Oh, speaking of Halloween, too, did you see all of the uh, Japanese Halloween costumes of people who aren't doing anything great? <laughs> no. So in Japan, the new Halloween trend is dressing up like people who aren't very important or special. So, like, there's pictures of one guy and he's holding a plastic tray and his costume is man in line at the hotel breakfast <laughs> i love it and then there's one and it's a lady and she's got like one hand up by her head and her head kind of tilted like she doesn't know and in her other hand she's got a bag of recycling and it's lady who took the recycling out on the wrong day Oh my god. <laughs> I want to see them all. It's so funny. I love that. I saw like deep, deep meme ones on Twitter and like funny, like like non-important characters or frames from Spongebob. Right. Yes. That shit. Steve Buscemi still won Halloween though, for sure. Oh, him dressing up as the fellow kids guy? Yes. Yeah, that was I'm so cool. bummed out that I and then I saw a different picture with him and Elvis Costello just like hanging out, handing out candy last night. You know what I realized too? I saw because I saw Greg dressed up as a hot dog. Greg Newkirk dressed up as a hot dog. Mm -hmm. This was the year of hot dog costumes. I saw so many people and animals in hot dogs. I don't know what happened to people over the pandemic, but that was the hit fucking costume of this Halloween season. I feel like I saw at least, and I almost did it. That's the funny part is I was going to do it for Stash, but I didn't. Um, but I saw about 20, well, maybe 30 different people on Instagram who were Lydia from Beetlejuice this year. Oh, yeah. Like a lot. But I ended up doing Beetlejuice makeup and like wore black and white. I didn't even plan on doing anything, but the last second I'm like, do something. 
I don't know. Meanwhile, in Japan, <laughs> meanwhile, in Japan, there's a guy in a business suit slowly wiping sweat from his forehead, and he is man who got to work just in time. Oh my god. <laughs> I love those so much. So good. Do you remember? I, I don't know if you remember, like back maybe 10, 15 years ago when like kanji tat, I'm sure they're still popular, but when people were getting kanji tattoos over here so much and they just didn't say the right thing. And then for a while, people over there were just getting like American words, like one American word. Yeah. When I was growing up, I, you might be just slightly too young, but when I was, I grew up in the era of for some reason, America went crazy for Japanese. Like I personally had a sleeveless black Japanese t-shirt that had like a rising sun and some Japanese characters on it that I just wore around because of Japan. Yeah, I had a tank top that was like that where it was like turquoise and yellow and white and red. And it just had like some words on it. I don't know what it said. Yeah. It was cute. Yeah, that was like 2000s. Oh, I'm talking about the 80s. Oh, I don't know. Maybe Something we happened. I think it was because of the Karate Kid. Oh, yeah. But there were a lot of dudes in my high school all of a sudden just wearing like Japanese like bandanas wrapped around their head and stuff. I feel like when there was a raver situation, there would be like shirts like that, too. Yeah, you know? probably. Yeah. I submitted my second article last night for comainevent.com because I'm an MMA writer now. Big time I shit. About it. I know. I talked about it on here before, but even if you don't watch the fights, you could still read my crystal breakdowns. I do like a thing where I designate a crystal to a certain fighter on the card for the weekend and say what they could use help with or whatever. So I got picked up by a website, like a legitimate website. Because other people have asked me to do it before, and their sites were kind of small. No offense. Um, and I said no. Because I didn't, and I'm too fucking busy. I didn't feel like doing it. Anyway, I'm like, I'll just do it for myself when I feel like it. And I didn't really want it to be a job. But then when these this site asked me, I was like, okay, yes. So I'm only going to be doing it for the pay-per-views. But I submitted my article last night, and I'm getting paid. It's not like I'm getting it for free. I'm getting paid. I don't know what I'm getting paid. but So now I'm a tattooer, podcaster, and I do paranormal events. And I'm an MMA writer, and I don't know, blah, 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 I don't know what else. Dog mom. Dog mom. Um, you're on a legitimate. Um, you're on a legitimate website now, and meanwhile, I've spent the past two weeks trying to get porno ads taken off of my legitimate website. I know that's a bum out. It's a bum out. Can you? I'm gonna. Well, my, what, my, you know what's gonna happen? I like already know because I'm going round and round with the hosting provider. Is like. There's going to be a week where my website isn't up because I'm going to have to delete the whole fucking thing and then recraft it, re-upload it, re-upload 500 fucking articles like it's going to be a nightmare. I know. That's what I was thinking, like, because my old travel blog got hacked, too, and I've never fixed it. And then I was talking to Greg about it, and he's like, oh, you just have to write to WordPress or whatever the fucking, and they'll fix it. And I'm like, mm. and then I just, like, never did it. I'm like, that sounds like too much. I'll probably, that'll probably be a, like a December project while I'm in the house because of snow. Yes. I have lots of those lined up. I have to get like a website. Robin made me a website for my magic brows like a while ago and I still haven't even gotten it going. I'm an idiot. I just don't have any time. You were on Robin's podcast. I was on Robin's podcast. I got to do Coffee and Cauldrons, the, the latest episode. It's on Apple, Spotify, et cetera. With Robin, a tired witch, and Maria the Arcane from Instagram. And we talked about a lot of stuff. They We talked about ghost stories. We talked about tarot. We talked about, well, I don't know. It was fun, though. They asked good questions. It was a good show. Yeah. Good work, buddy. Thanks. Didn't you just do something? I was going to bring up something that you did, too. What did you do? Uh, I don't know. What did I do? I don't know. I thought there was something else that you did that we didn't talk about. I don't think so. I did uh, Cliff and Bobo's show, maybe. Did we talk about that? I don't yeah, think, I think we did. So. We... Oh, I think no. so. I didn't listen to that one yet. I'm trying to wrap my head around um, Amy's event next July. Oh, I don't think um, I don't think I can go. It just like, sounds like a lot. Fly to England. Go to Stonehenge. Go to Paris. Go to Bordeaux. Go to Spain. See the catacombs. Yeah, you can see the catacombs. Get the catacombs in Paris. Yeah. No. I just feel like it's because me and you talked about when we finally get over there, we're going to have to spend like three, four weeks and just, oh God, shh, 
and go wherever we want and take time. And I know if I do it this way, I'm going to be like, no, but wait, uh, I, I just don't, I don't know. I think I just got to wait until we go one day yeah. somehow. Yeah. Cause like, yeah. And those days uh, they always start so early and shit. And it's like, I don't want to do it like that. A lot of those are going to start early. Like I know some of the, I think the, like the catacombs tour and stuff that starts at like eight in the morning. That's so all. It's early. There's only one, aside from, I'll tell you what though, aside from Stonehenge and Paris and England and Spain and seeing the catacombs and all that stuff, there's one thing I'm super fucking hyped about doing on that event. That's not even on part of her event. I'm just going to do it while I'm there. Oh God, what? I'm sorry. No, even Toad's excited. He knows it's exciting. He must be excited about it for you. What? I'm going to, I'm going to go to Hollybrook Cemetery in Southampton, England. Who's in there? Benny Hill. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that was a real big. I thought you were going to say like a famous horror person, not Benny Hill. It's Benny Hill. Oh my God. Calm down. Didn't you like Benny Hill? No. Benny Hill was like the first time I think I saw tits. Don't say that word. On TV. Boobs. There you go. Knockers. Tits is so aggressive. Swangers. Swangers. Throwback. <laughs> Can you believe that somebody brought up Texas Toad House and I didn't even notice? I think we, you had a psychic premonition in Texas Toad House episode. I know, because I totally forgot. It was like one of our first episodes. And then I, and then I was like thinking back, the whole premise of the dream that surround, that was Texas Toad House was you sit down at a restaurant and they didn't have any food and they show you a menu and you can adopt a toad. That was the yeah. fucking dream. Yeah. And that's what I did. And I didn't even notice. And then somebody DM me and they're like, hello. And I'm like, oh my God. And then this was your first Halloween and it was with Toad and I released the Halloween Frog song. I know. And Bean's two favorite toys over his entire life were these two tiny frog toys. And they're the only ones that I kept of his and I'm going to put them in a shadow box and maybe they're Toads. I don't know. Worlds colliding. I know. Sinks on sinks. Crazy time. What else have I been meaning to bring up to you? Is there something on web crawlers? They bring us up against something? I don't remember. I don't think so. You got any weird itches? Like what? Got any strange rashes? No, ew. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know I'm going to UFC this weekend in New York, and you haven't talked about me hopping cocks yet. I was gonna leave that wait that leave that up to you. Well, we'll see if I do or not. I mean, it's more fun to talk about it afterwards. It's true. What else am I gonna do? Oh, I'm getting tattooed on Sunday. I still don't know what I'm getting. So I'm going to Brooklyn, and that's where like. Action Bronson and like, um, what's a Jonah Hill go there. So maybe I'll see somebody famous. Wait, you're going to get tattooed when? Sunday. Maybe I'll, maybe this Sunday I'll get tattooed. You will not. And then we can get tattooed on the same day, but we'll be in different places. You can't go get a tattoo without me. Just joking. I have mid Michigan on Sunday. I know. Tyler's going to be there. I don't think so. No, he is. He posted about it today. Oh, he did? Yeah. He's selling drawings or something. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. So you'll see him, and Andrew's mm-hmm. gonna be there, right? And the Ghost Brothers, Brian Brian Danhausen will be there. Did you see how Danhausen broke his leg? I did. That sucks. It sucks. He's really got a whole thing going right now. That's a that's a kick in the balls. Yeah. He'll be okay though. Yes, sending good magic to Danhausen. Very evil, very healthy. Very evil. Good juju to Danhausen. What's he gonna say? What I was going to say was, because we glossed over it, didn't you love the Halloween frog song that I posted? Yeah, I loved it. You, I, when we were saying this in person, you made it sound more whimsical on here. So I was like, this is kind of weird. And then, but you made it sound more spooky in the recording. And then I liked it more. Yes. Now I, I just have to go in the studio and record a full version. I know. Maybe I'll bring you in and you can go, ooh, in the background. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> I can do that. What was I going to say? Something about, I don't know, I don't remember. Blah, 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 blah. I thought there was something else I had to say, or again, nothing. Oh, that's what it was. Um, in, I was, I was going to say, I wish in two weeks you weren't going to Strange Escapes in New Hampshire because in two weeks is that con in Chicago where Hooper and Billy Zane are going to be there, and I might go by myself. <laughs> you should. I know I have, there's a room rate for their con- uh, convention, like they booked out the whole hotel and it's kind of cheap and I could just drive down there and hang out. Yeah. I'm kind of scared to go alone, but I wish I was looking at the thing and I was like, I wish like Aaron Sagers or like some paranormal person was going to be there. It's like nobody 
then you're just going to be forced to make friends with people. I know. <laughs> That's how it happens. I didn't know any, like when I started doing, when cons started to hit really hard, like I didn't really know, you know, they would book me as a paranormal person, but there were no other paranormal people there. And I didn't know any of the actors or anything. So I just had to make friends with people. And I made like good connections with weird people who, one of the first conventions I ever did was in Chicago. And I was sitting next to this guy and girl who their show hadn't started yet. And no one's paying attention to us because Chris Hemsworth was there and he was the first Thor movie was about to come out. And so everybody was like, busting their ass to see Chris Hemsworth and I'm sitting next to this girl and this guy and at the end we've smoked cigarettes all weekend long and at the end of the convention I gave them my autograph and they gave me theirs and they were like well we'll probably never see each other again because our shows will be taken off the air and they were right my show got taken off the air but it was Lori Holden and John Bernthal from The Walking Dead and so I hung out with them all weekend because no one knew who they were because Walking Dead hadn't been on yet dang they were there in advanced promotion so like they ended up becoming real people. <laughs> that guy was it has been in other shit though. But I think Walking Dead is really kind of what made him. him. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking while you were saying that I could bring our podcast stickers and give them to strangers. Yep, you could. I could. If I was I with you, if I was with you, we could probably call them and tell them we were going to podcast from the event, and they would lesson for free. <sighs> I know, it's such bad timing. But I'll be in New Hampshire doing lots of ghost stuff, hanging with the people I know, seeing lots of strange things. Maybe see a bear. Maybe see a bear. Maybe get eaten by a bear. Maybe get knocked down and mauled by a bear. <laughs> Your room, the last time we were there was so fucking big, you're going to have that big ass room all to yourself. Yep. Crazy. Just fill it up with old lady ass. Ew. <laughs> you're gonna fill it up with salt and vinegar chips like you did last time and you're trying to choke. That is true. Gonna my fill my room up with some salt and vinegar chips. Yeah. Sick. Gack. I hope fun. Amy doesn't put me out in the barn again because it's cold out there. You're gonna get put in the barn. I know. Well, you guys should have to draw straws or something. That's not fair. Well, Greg and Danny get to stay inside. Well, they didn't. One time they had to be in the graveyard. But then the last time I think they got to be the last couple times they got to be inside because they have museum objects. But then I'd rather years, be in a barn. I always get stuck outside in the barn with the animals, which is fine. I get to pet a horse and everything, but it's still cold out there. Yeah, the barn's better than a graveyard, though. At least you have some shelter. And yeah. Anyway. yeah. Well, if it's too too cold, nobody should be in the fucking graveyard. I got frostbite on my hands. It's get it gets problematic after a while. Hmm. We'll bring a uh, earmuffs. And a face thing. I look like the kid from A Christmas Story. Yeah. I can't, can't put my arms down. I just got 8,000 things wrapped around me. Yeah. What'd you do all week? I haven't seen you all week. I just did my stuff. Did things. You mean you cleaned your house like seven times? Yeah. You're crazy. Um, it's a secret John life. I'm trying to think if I watched anything. I didn't really watch anything spooky this week. I don't know why. I just like wasn't in the Halloween spirit, which is weird. I've just been watching a lot of old game shows. I realize that I'm at the point now where I can put together a daily playlist. And if I want to, I can just watch like 1950s TV all day long in the order that it actually played in the 1950s. Like I could watch an episode of I Love Lucy followed by an episode of What's My Line followed by an episode of To Tell the Truth. Like I can just watch all old television shows and movies for the rest of my life, which is only like probably four or five years anyway. Oh, God. I was going to DM you last <laughs> night. Did you see Judge Judy's new show started today? I saw Judge Judy's got a new show. And you can watch it on Amazon. I'm going to yeah. watch all the apps. It looks good. It's called Judy Justice. <laughs> <laughs> the dog does stuff when I did that. That sounds like the name of a singer for a punk rock band in the 80s. Yes, with like a nose ring that goes to their ear. Judy yep. Justice. Yeah. Full on damage with their lead singer Judy Justice. You, yeah, I'm excited about that. What else is coming out soon? Oh, we gotta see the Anya Taylor Joy movie. Yeah, yeah, did I wanted see- to do that before I went to New York, but I don't have time. Did you see the interview with her on James Corden? No. Where she was talking about how she can cry on cue, like she can just instantly start making herself cry, and how she does it to her friends all the time when they're just hanging out. James, what a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> That's she real. said she, she said she stopped doing it because her friends were like, you're not even really crying now. And then like sometimes she's like, 
No, I am sad. <laughs> Dang, that's what you get. Cry wolf. Yeah. I mean, you can never be mad at your friend if they were that pretty. You'd be like, you, uh, you're fine. I'd be, I want my friends to cry all the time. I do cry around you all the time. Yeah, you are kind of a mess. I know, man. You've cried around me before? Yeah, I know. You've probably cried around me more times than I've cried around you. Whatever. You've cried harder over me than I cried harder over you. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> that was your fault. I thought you were dead. I was just testing you. Okay, well. It worked. It worked. <laughs> 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 Talk about psychopaths. I know, geez. Uh, we had so much stuff in the mail lately. I just remember Shell Bell sent me some stuff for Toadie, and she sent something for you, so I'll give it to you tomorrow. I don't know what it is. It's in a. It's wrapped up, so I can't look at it. Good. Good. Um, so we gotta go. To, listen, we gotta go to Oakland County Courthouse tomorrow. Uh huh. Gotta go to the post office tomorrow. Yeah, because I went to the P.O. box today and there was two of those cards in there that said one thing needs a signature and then another thing said it was too big for the P.O. box, so we have to go there. And I packaged up our winners from our coffee contest with Old Town Roasting, and then I packaged up two other things that have to go out. And you have to go to the chiropractor. And the chiro. And I have to go to the bank. Okay, yeah. So big, big day tomorrow. Big day. I know. We might have to get up early. Like eight. No. <laughs> Early for us is like 10 or 11. <laughs> All right. Well, then we'll get up real early and get up at like 8.30. No. Yeah. I don't need that much time. All right. I don't. I'm not going to the car that early anyway. He'll break my whole body. <laughs> I won't even be awake yet. I need to be somewhat alive to go to the chiropractor. Did you get in? Did you, have you been working out for New York? No, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I've been eating like a monster ever since I got back from Vegas and now I feel like I'm fucking fat again and I have to leave in like two days. I rode the exercise bike last night. I'm going to ride it again tonight. I've been eating pretty decent. I cut out all pop. Why don't you just fast? Do a water fast for like 24 or 40 hours. I mean, I'm fine. Whatever. If I get, uh, I don't never, um, everything's fine. It's not like I'm going to hook up with a stranger. If I hook up with somebody, it'll be hooked up. Somebody I've hooked up with before, and they know what I fucking look like. Who, whatever. They're just, they're no surprises. I know, like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, boy. Good times. Good times. Are we done? Do we have it? I have nothing to talk about. I feel very boring. No, I think we're fine. We're done. Okay. You got anything else? Nothing? No, I'm not gonna. I wish it was warmer. I'll take a walk with the dog right now, but it's fucking freezing. Yeah. I'm gonna eat I'm my gonna, dinner. Uh, and pass out. This early? You had, you had Taco Bell. I'm gonna eat my dinner. It says right now feels like outside is 37. Gross. Yeah, I know. Devastating. I'm gonna eat my dinner and pass out, and that's it. All right, maybe I'll try and go to bed early too. Oh, this, I know we're trying You're to. You're having Taco Bell for dinner for sure, though. Oh, God, shut up. I, only have, I have Buddy's Pizza. That's all I got. Yeah, that sounds fucking delicious. <laughs> um, and Buddy Bread. Well, I was going to say, I don't know if you told me to do this a while back, too, or what, but I finally started two nights ago the thing. Because you know how me and you both do this, but I feel like a lot of people do this, so maybe this will be helpful to somebody how we think that we didn't accomplish a lot in a day and then we're just like, uh, and then it gives us like anxiety or like it makes us feel like shit. Cause we're like, Oh, I meant to do like X, Y, and Z today. And I only did the one thing and, uh, so no, two nights I told, ago, I told, I did tell you to do this. Yeah. So two nights ago, I started a journal that Marley actually sent me and I wrote down all the things that I did in the day that were productive and I, this, okay. So I started on Saturday and I felt like I did absolutely nothing. And I wrote down 14 things. Yeah. Yeah. And it made me feel so much better and I slept so good. Yes. And then last night I did it again. And I think there was like 12 things and I'm like, what the fuck? And it makes you feel so good. Cause you're like, cause I don't know why, especially before you go to sleep, you focus on the one or two things you didn't fucking get to. And then you just feel like a colossal failure, but then you're like, don't give yourself any credit for the, all the fucking shit that you did. Right. And you just, and it's, you don't, and that's the thing too, is I, cause I told you this, like, it doesn't like, just write down the things you did, write down, like, did the dishes, did the laundry, folded yeah. the clothes, 
Like, and then you realize like, that's what you act. You look at, and then you look at what you did and you're like, Oh fuck. I did a ton of shit. Yep. That's what I did. And it was all like a lot. It was so productive. Mm -hmm. And I swear before I wrote, I really thought there was nothing. Yeah. No, it helps. It does. Yeah. I feel like I slept better. I like fell asleep less anxious or whatever. And then like, I don't know. I love it. I got to keep doing that. Yeah. It's good for your brain. Yeah. After I, after I died, what part of my therapy was I journaled. This might sound a little insane, but I was so kind of untethered to reality, like not knowing what had happened to me and what went on. I literally journaled all day long, every single thing, like every single thing I did. Like I carried my journal with me and a pen and I would write like stood up and walked into the kitchen. Now I'm in the kitchen. And I did that literally for a month and a half, like just every single minute thing that I did. And I mean, it was pages and pages for every day. And then eventually, like, I just started writing. I stopped writing down that I was moving from one one room to the next. I just started writing what I did when I was in those rooms. And that's when I really realized, like, oh, I'm even though I'm not doing anything, I am doing a ton of fucking shit all day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and sometimes you realize, too, that, like, just taking a shower is a fucking accomplishment. Mm hmm. Yeah, especially when you have like anxiety and depression, it's so hard to like start anything or or finish anything or whatever. And then when you see all the stuff you did, it's like, nice, a little, little pat on the back for myself. Well, I even have things when I get into my anxiety and my depression too. There are literally pages in my journal right now that say like, didn't want to get out of bed today, didn't feel too good, took an extra hour in bed, read part of that book, watched this television show, went downstairs, made breakfast, came back up. And then all of a sudden you realize like you're doing things again. Yeah. Yeah. So people should try that maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it so far. And it like, it's like, I feel like it's um like a reverse too of like, I'm a big like to-do list person. So I'll make them in my phone. And then when I don't get to them, I'm like, oh, fuck. And then they make me feel shittier than if I didn't even write one. Um, right. So with this, like you're, you're eliminating stuff that you didn't get to it's just the stuff you did and then it looks great yeah right yeah it, like it. people should be making i done lists instead of to-do lists yes i done it i done I it, did it. <laughs> yeah. there's our tip for the week you know one of the things you said that about making to-do lists you know one of the things that i hate that some of my friends still actually have what some of my friends still have honey do lists Ew. You know what that is? Stuff you want your husband or boyfriend or girlfriend to do? Yes. Gross. Honey, do it yourself. Yeah, no shit. Stupid. Yeah, it's gross. I've had friends of mine say, like, I got a whole bunch of honey do list stuff today. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. what kind of life is that? Get out of here. I know I had a client today and I told her I was going to New York later this week and she's and it just or maybe she, I don't know, it's somewhere in the same sentence. She was like, oh, are you dating anybody, blah, 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 Or like, do you live with anybody? I think I was talking about the dog and I was like, I'm not dating anybody and I'm going to New York this week and I don't have to tell anybody shit. <laughs> 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 it's the best feeling. Like, like if I was there, I'd be like, oh, you know, I think I'll go eat here today and then I'll be here and oh, I'll call you later. Ugh, ah, ugh. <laughs> no. <laughs> you do whatever I want. <laughs> no, see you never. Talk to you never. Bye. <laughs> I'm out here. If we do something, if we do something, I'll put you in my done list. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> All right. Let's All right. Go eat food. Okay. I'll let you know when I'm coming tomorrow. Thanks. All right. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.